We wanted to do a documentary on Lewis and Clark, but we did not know much about them. So we decided to ask around. It turns out some people know a lot. I'm here today with uh, Blaine High School's principal, Mr. Ellis, here to ask him a little bit about Lewis and Clark. But first, tell us a little about yourself, Mr. Ellis. Well, thanks, Jake. Uh, I've been, uh, this is my second year as principal here at Blaine High School. I was a vice principal starting in 2000, and I was a special ed teacher starting in 1994. University of Idaho, class of 94. Okay, very good. Uh, do you, can you tell us anything about the Lewis and Clark expedition? Well, the Lewis and Clark, that's a pretty general question, but uh, what I know of the Lewis and Clark expedition is what opened up the West to the America, uh, Manifest Destiny. These two uh, uh, government explorers explored all the way to the Pacific Ocean and came and gave us the route for expanding our country westward and found several. They were really looking for the Northwest Passage, but in doing that, they found everything you know, west of Missouri, and explored it for us, made maps, etc. So, uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition, on their expedition, they made relations with the Indians. Can you tell us a little about their relations with the Americans? Well, of course, to get to know the lay of the land, they'd have to get the local uh, people to help them with that, and I'm sure some of that was good and some of that was bad, but in the end, they found the right people to get them on their way and to develop the right, uh, you know, collegiality so there would be... Uh, the further expansion of America. Now, that was that good for the Native Americans? Probably not. But in the end, uh, they they did their uh, thing with them to help them get through where they were going. Knowing that the Lewis Clark expedition ultimately led to reservations for the Indians, uh, do you think that Sacagawea would regret her assisting Lewis and Clark uh, if she could see how natives lived today? All the way to today? Yeah. That'd be a tough question there. That's a you'd have to have Socrates or something like that. It'd be something like us saying, you know, we helped uh, some alien nation uh, when they first arrived in Earth, and then all of a sudden they imprisoned us. So probably not. But uh, I don't know. That's a that's a tough one. Uh, have you done any um, hiking or any pioneering whatsoever? Does it look like I've done any <laughs> hiking? It's not my favorite thing to do. I've done a little bit of fishing in my time. Fishing, okay. So, if you were out uh, in the expedition, Lewis Mark expedition, what do you think that you would be able to bring to the table? What would I personally be able to bring to the table? Oh, goodness, they wouldn't want me on that trip. Um, probably the guy in the back of the canoe complaining a lot about the heat. And, yeah, I was more of a, I'd say I'd be a, in the late 1700s, early 1800s, I'd be a city person. Hanging out with Ben Franklin, doing experiments, that type of thing. Uh, without the Lewis Clark expedition, uh, how do you think America would be today? Like, what would be the impact if there was no expedition? Well, I, I certainly think that we would have not bought uh, the Louisiana Purchase from France at such a great price. Because we would, it's kind of the unknown thing. You know, we bought Alaska, and everybody thought that was such a bad deal, when really it was a great deal. But without them saying what was out there and the, the possibilities for exploration and expansion... Uh, maybe we would have definitely felt some, you know, lengthening of period. I, I don't think that we would have not expanded to the West Coast, but certainly would have not been at the Louisiana trip as purchased for a cheap price and then, then the manifest destiny to keep expanding. Okay, one final question. So out of Lewis and Clark, who do you believe would have been the more attractive male? Attractive male? Well, Meriwether Lewis certainly was the ladies' man, I would say, for sure. Okay, uh, any final statements? I'd just like to thank you guys for being members of Ichiban and uh, in our world travels together that uh, you guys are one of a kind and we will certainly be hoping for good things next year. Okay. Thank you. Good day. All right. Hi, we are here with Mr. Vizzetti and we understand that he is a Lewis and Clark expert so we will be asking him some questions. How are you doing, Mr. Vizzetti? Good, how are you? I am quite good. good. So, what exactly do you know about the Lewis and Clark expedition? Lewis and Clark expedition. Well. They, uh, they came over to the West to uh, uh, go on an adventure to figure out what was going on over here, and they also uh, have been on the radio quite a bit advertising Southwest Airlines. And of Lewis and Clark, which one would you say is better? Oh, probably Clark, because that would be me, right? Sure. So Mr. Ellis or me? Okay. All right. Well, uh, clearly what we know about Lewis and Clark was the fact that they made a huge impression on the U.S., uh, many people led to believe that they came westerly uh, over the Oregon Trail. However, that's not always the case. 
Uh, you know, taking the Mississippi and going west, they got a little detour along their way. Uh, there was a lot of uh, difficulties and frustration between the two that most people don't know about. Well, a lot of people, for example, don't really realize that while a lot of people say that they got along famously, they actually hated one another. Uh, one was notoriously ugly, uglier than sin. In fact, one had a mole probably about the size of a quarter that looked like a walrus in the rest of his face, had pock marks, and the other one, uh, his dietary habits were so foul, uh, that combination of spam and um, uh, salmon, uh, you know, it was kind of like when uh, one guy wouldn't uh, bathe and shower, he, his, he had kind of random bowel movement because of his diet, and it was pretty off offensive. It was sort of like uh, blazing saddles. Well, you know, uh, Lewis really had a strong affection for the guys, but uh, most people don't realize that he was often chasing uh, Saca Sacagawea. Uh, actually, I happen to know the correct, correct pronunciation. It's Sacagawea. Uh, quite often, and, uh, Charbonneau had to fight him off with kind of a billy club, which is probably why his family member was a uh, left-hand batter for the Cleveland Indians. Do you believe in fair trading? Well, yeah, if you can get some monetary gain out of it, you know. The other thing that's fascinating about Sacagawea uh, is a lot of people don't realize that she was a strong descendant who was passed on to the Ouija board. And it was after Sacagawea, the Ouija board that came down from her. What kind of shampoo do you think that they used in Well, you know, a lot of people will kind of first tell you that they think it's grilled cream. It's actually grease uh, from the inner minkies of the, the famous mink that they would use for some kind of uh, fur trade. Uh, they would scrape the underneath of its belly to take care of its hair. Okay. And you mentioned the diet of them? Can you uh, well, the sardines was, on that? Well, the sardines and spams, that, that's probably what gave him the uh, agitated bowel movement. Uh, Lewis, you know, he was notoriously foul, stinking, and, you know, sitting around farting around the campfire. You know, that was pretty offensive to Sacagawea. And do you think probably. that that might have affected them with the animals there? other inhabitants that they encountered? Well, it, it certainly didn't ha help along the way as far as trying to find their way. And that's really, if you think about it, that's why the Native Americans were so offense offended. You know, that's almost gotten killed twice uh, across them because of that offensive smell. N not only that, the, the fact that uh, Lewis was so damn hideous. Hmm. I've heard that uh, sardines are very uh, good for your hair. So does that mean Lewis also had very nice hair? Well, he had a, sh a shiny grill cream, that, and from that, that mink gel that they scraped off the belly, that really kept him kind of a sharp looking guy, but the fact that one kind of had a strong um, liking towards men, he was trying to keep the other men away from him, that was probably the most scary, and, and the fact that Sacagawea uh, knew their husband was trying to run away from him, so, yeah. Okay, well, I have one other question. Oh. Uh, of the two, who do you think had a better relation with uh, Sacagawea? Well, the fact that the one was so hideous, his, his face looked like a modern-day golf ball, and that fact that it had that, that big old gnarly mole that looked like a walrus, you know, it was pretty easy to take the stinky one, you know, I mean, you could probably cut him over with a, uh, a little bit of meat snot and make it look a little better, so I think that was probably a good goal. Okay, well, thank you very much. Absolutely, gentlemen. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Time. Yeah, you betcha. It's been a pleasure. Okay. You know, in the long run, it probably wasn't the best choice for the Native Americans to uh, to choose to be with, like, to befriend them and be yeah. open to them, especially since, like, if they had taken out the Lewis and Clark expedition, they would have had the largest arsenal, you know, anywhere on that part of the continent. So, yeah. um, but, you know, things happen the way they did. And some people knew a lot about their food. As one who's read the field notes over and over again, you'll notice that Lewis constantly refers to the copious amounts of meat. Meal after meal after meal of meat and only meat. And as you and I know, a long period of time in a diet based solely on meat leaves a large amount of undigested meat lodged in one's colon. And if you think about that over time, and consider the implications of not just one month, not just two months, but we're talking about a journey that lasted more than years to get from one side of the continent to another. That is an extraordinary amount of undigested meat they have lodged in their colons. Okay. And in my opinion, that simply is not attractive, Andrew. Know anything about the dying Sacagawea? Did she Pemmican. Pemmican. Yes. It's where you take meat fat 
Mix it together with large amounts of berries, preferably dried berries. And if there is anything in there that you want to spice it up with, perhaps a little bit of this or that, maybe some salt, maybe some pepper, whatever you have out there on the trail, then you put that together in sort of a jelly-like mixture, and then you put it into whatever you have handy, perhaps the old bladder of one of the animals that you've slaughtered, and you carry it around in a steaming hot day for maybe a month or two, and then you take that out. It's surprisingly delicate, delicious, and well-preserved. Right. And that is what young Sacagawea was eating, while the rest of them were, of course, diving into, once again, the meat fest. Others knew little of anything. What do I know about Lewis and Clark? Why, yeah. the, the expedition? Two guys, Lewis and Clark. Or it could be one guy, Lewis Clark. <laughs> you know, that would be good. Um, and they traveled, and they explored, and they were led by a very, very smart woman. They all are. Yeah? Mm -hmm. oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. Do you know the name of this uh, smart woman? Sacagawea Nelson. Oh. Is that Is her it? name? Is it, is that? Yeah, yeah. Was she related to you? She might have been. No, no I'll summarize it with Thomas Jefferson when they... It happened in the 1950s, I believe. So basically, um, they met up with Sacagawea, like, I don't know, they took like an Amtrak to the west coast and discovered Seattle. Yeah. Where met the, the, the... Look at that. Thank you for air, the, all the grams up there, you know. And this way, and you know, that will fit seven pies in there. We ran into many obstacles on a quest for knowledge. Open the door, open the door. We gotta get him! Go, oh, go, go! We, that, that thing isn't even off. <laughs> We're on our way. Mr. Grandma. Why don't you want to be on camera? What are you hiding? <laughs> are the Eddie, rumors true? What rumors? Sacagawea. Sacagawea. I don't want to talk about Sacagawea. Why not? Um, she was a little promiscuous, should I say. Can we hear details? No. <laughs> was that night true? <clears throat> what not true? The night. What night? That night you guys went on that trek <laughs> to the Northwest. Yes, she was my third wife. So the newspapers were correct? Yes, I confess. What do you have to say to your old wife? Get out of here. Do you know what Lewis and Clark were doing on their trek here? They were exhibitionists. Okay, and what types of things were they doing on their way here? They were going through jungles, like the Amazon. <laughs> And what kind of animals did they find in the trek? Wolves. Wolves? What did they do to these wolves? They... They, look at the camera, they, they trained them. To do what? what? Exactly. <laughs> Kill. Kill who? Like... I don't want to say it. Just say it. <laughs> the natives? Oh, you seem like you're very patriotic carrying an American flag. What do you feel about the Native Americans in our country? <laughs> They should get off the reservation and do what? Find their own land. <laughs> um, well, Lewis and Clark, they were males, right? Right. Um, inspired by the true story of the two gerbils, right? Back in England, no? No, I don't tell them what I was. What was it like knowing Lewis and Clark? They were pretty good guys. I'm. Uh, Meriwether Lewis, we used to call him Mary Badweather Lewis because he was he was bipolar. Well, they're both definitely like dimes in my opinion. But right. It's hard to it's hard to you can't break them down. Like it was two good looking guys. You can't just you tell one's ugly and like the other ones. They're, they're both good looking. Like. Is it true that Lewis and Clark were actually brothers? Uh, that is a falsehood. They were sisters. Lewis was kind of a jerk, but uh, Clark was definitely a good, a good guy. He was a good guy. He helped me out. He carried the team on his back. Um, Sepsakaha Wahagia. She had a, a weight problem. But It's been rumored that Lewis and Clark met a uh, woman named Sacagawea on their uh, trip. Do you know anything about her? Uh, well, I know she lived. She gambled a lot. Gambled. She gambled a lot. Uh, 
I don't know if that was because of her ethnicity, but. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> they were hired by someone on the East Coast. Do you know who that person was? No, 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 that wasn't a president. There was no president at that time. Um, I have no idea who, actually. Okay. Who was the president of the United States of America? Wasn't that Andrew Jackson? Um, Lewis and Clark. Well, I know that Andrew Jackson really didn't like brown people. Okay. He, he made it an objective of his to kill as many as he could. I know that. Overall, the theme of the Lewis and Clark expedition was clear. Yeah. What do you think the original reason for Lewis and Clark setting on the expedition was? The ultimate reason? Um, manifest destiny. Manifest destiny. Manifest destiny. Manifest destiny. Manifest destiny. Manifest destiny. Rap music. Okay. All right. Stop it. I assume you're in history class this year. You are a junior. What history teacher did you choose? You're not in history class. No. I do writing, sorry. <laughs> so uh, we are out here looking for a local celebrity, Laura Nelson, in her natural habitat. And uh, we're trying to see if we can track her down. Hey, 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 oh, there he is. There she is. All right, we have some questions for you. We've heard that you're an expert on the Lewis and Clark expedition, and we're wondering if you can fill us in on some information. An expert? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, so the answer is B. B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that On to the next question. <laughs> All right, next question. Yes. Uh, tell us, or give us a, a quick overview. Overview. Of what you know about the Lewis and Clark expedition. Yes. Tell me this. You can be as that. Um, well, I was born when I was very young, but I don't remember much of that. So, what actually should have happened was um, a Native American communist movement of the people, the red people, no, it's, a, it's a pun, as I've already pointed out, because, I don't know, I really don't, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> But I'll keep going, I'll keep going. What do you want to say? Andrew? Well, I heard you say, I don't want to do this anymore. Is that uh, in reference to the uh, Rihanna song? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut.